that you would please bring your, bring your seats forward, close your tray tables and fasten your seat belts. If you see near a window, we ask that you would please open the window shade for landing. It was just interesting because I wasn't expecting my weekend to go like this. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back. It's been so long since I last filmed a YouTube video. I'm so excited to be filming one today. Please say hello to Oikawa. He's always here, always stealing the show. This past weekend for me, I'm filming this on December 7th. I was in Boston and I got some really, really, really cool footage of Boston. It was absolutely beautiful, but I want to explain the story behind it because I think it's hilarious. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. If you're new, you can subscribe and click the bell. That way, every single time I post a new video, you will be notified. I post sporadically, but I do stream on Twitch regularly on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And I do post on TikTok and Instagram every single day. I'm super active on my Instagram story as well and on my Twitter. I never shut up. I also released merch recently for anyone who does not know. <laughs> if you hear that jingling bell and see a cat tail, it's because Venus is running around. I recently launched new merch. It's a really, they're really, really awesome, really cool designs. I'm so proud of them. I really can't pick which one's my favorite, but I know a lot of people really, really love the Aizawa one. So if you want to check it out, uh, the link is in my card co down below. It, they are, they're they're so cool. So if you want to get them for Christmas or anything, you can. Thanks so much for everyone who has ordered, by the way. I gotten so much love on it. It makes me so, so happy. And I'm just so, oh, I'm so excited about it. So I know I talk about it a lot and a lot of people probably get annoyed, but I'm just, it's something I'm super, super proud of. It's like my creation that people like, like, you know, and it's just so cool to me. Let me start here. So the trip to Boston wasn't one we just wanted to go on and we just decided that like we would go to Boston this weekend. Like if we didn't go because of that, it was a personal reason that we had to take an emergency trip out there. I wanted to make the best of it. My mom was like we need to go to Boston and I was like okay I'll go with you Nessa will stay now planes make me very nervous so I want you to keep this in mind through the rest of this story modes of transportation freak me out since I was like 19 especially when I'm going to be in them for extended periods of time I'm not the best person to travel with I get very queasy I'm very anxious I can't help it I don't know why usually before trips I get super 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 anxious and I have like full-blown panic attacks every time I go on a trip I always have a panic attack because I'm weird and I you know everyone has the things that make them anxious and for whatever reason that's mine on Friday evening I started panicking and I was like I can't go I can't go and I was like throwing up I was making myself sick like I was crying I was freaking out I know other people get like this too so if you do you're not alone I'm right there with you and so then my sister was like whatever I'll just go then she decided that she was gonna go with my mom at like 1 o'clock in the morning now we all thought their flight was supposed to leave at 10 a.m. Eastern time we were supposed to be at Dulles Airport they were supposed to be getting on the flight they were boarding they would be there by 12 yeah from Dulles International it's only like an hour and 20 minute fly to Boston I go to bed and I'm like still panicking. I have severe traveling anxiety. I wake up at 6 30 in the morning. My mom's getting ready to go. For whatever reason I woke up and I like wasn't afraid anymore. Like I don't know why. I went to bed at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I wasn't scared. I was like I could just go. Like I could just go on this trip. At 7 30 in the morning Nessa wakes up. She books my plane ticket. We're all going to Boston. This was not how it was going to work originally. I was supposed to stay home by myself and take care of everyone while they were in Boston just for like a day. But then I just decided at literally 7 o'clock in the morning. 30 minutes before we had to leave to get to the airport I wanted to go so Nessa booked me a seat I was throwing shit into a bag at 7 30 I was throwing on clothes and I just made a spur of the moment decision to face my fears and go to Boston because I can't I've been working on not living in fear because I'm a big person who lets fear restrict me from doing things that could be fun and exciting we leave the house by 8 18 we stop at Dunkin Donuts my mom needs her tea by the way the animals were taken care of by the time we get to the airport we're like running late so we're booking it through Dulles International we're running we're running through Dulles International and we're like, we're gonna miss our flight. We're gonna miss our flight. And we made it by a hair. They started boarding and Nessa and I are sitting in line. We're group three to get on the flight. I just so happened to look up at the screen and it says boarding for Denver, Colorado. We were in line about to get on a flight to Denver, Colorado without even knowing it. And so I was like, we missed our flight. We missed our flight. My mom goes to talk to one of the people that works at the airport. And they were like, ma'am, your ticket is booked for 9.30 p.m. We got to the airport 12 hours early because we all didn't look at the end time of if it was a.m. or p.m. And our flight was supposed to leave at 10 p.m. to go to Boston. And so we were in the airport 12 hours early. And so then the flight attendant was like, let me just fix it for you. Let me put you on an earlier flight. They got us a flight for 12. We took it. We ended up in Boston. I was, I literally did not think that this is how my weekend was going to go. But apparently I went to Boston for the weekend and it was so freaking awesome. Flying makes me violently nervous. So naturally I was 
freaking out the entire time. It really wasn't a bad flight at all. I've had a good experience with most of my flights besides the one flying back from California, from California to DC. It was very bumpy and it made me really nervous back in February of 2020. This one wasn't bad at all. There wasn't much turbulence. I got some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shots. Oh my gosh. Flying is so scary for those who are afraid of like modes of transportation. It's very loud. I feel like it's more of a fear of heights and like the fear of falling out of the sky, I guess. But it actually is the safest way of travel. The likelihood of you getting into a plane crash is one in five million. So that just puts it into perspective how rare it is to get into a plane crash. And so I was like, every, like, you know, like calm down, it's gonna be fine. Whatever, I was freaking out the entire time. I'm not very calm, but it was a very quick flight. It was only an hour and 20 minutes. I got to sit at the window seat and it just, oh my gosh, it was so beautiful, especially when we were like above the clouds. Oh my goodness. So when we got to Boston, we rented a car and everything and we were going to our hotel. We sit at this hotel called, it's called Yotel. I believe it's on Seaport Street in Boston. We stayed there. It was super cool. It was really secure, which I liked a lot. The only way that you could get upstairs was if you had a key card. When you like check in, it gives you a key card for your room, for your stay. Like not everyone can just go and grab the key card because it's specifically made for you, which I thought was really cool. To get into the elevator to go up, you had to tap the key card before you went up. It was super secure. It was super awesome. It was a very compact hotel. I've never seen anything like it. I thought it was super, super cool. The feel of it was really awesome. The view was absolutely gorgeous. We got like a straight across view of, I believe it was a condominium, I'm not quite sure what it was. I didn't really get to explore it too much. We were only there for like 18 hours maybe and then we flew home. You got to see like the street and everything. It was, it was all decorated for Christmas. You could see the harbor like across from some buildings, which I thought was super, super cool. It was such a beautiful city. There was like this bridge and then these like buildings and the buildings lit up at night. Like one of them lit up orange. I'm not sure if I got a shot of that or not, um, but it did. And it was just so, 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 so beautiful. Oh my goodness. And Everyone in Boston, their style, holy crap. Every single person I saw was wearing a fabulous coat. They all looked so amazing. Everyone was just like dressed to impress. It was gorgeous. We only stayed in that area and then we got food from this place called Lola Burger. That place was really good. The burger, that is the biggest burger I've ever, it was a vegetarian burger obviously because I'm a vegetarian. I did not film it because that was the first time we were eating that day because the day was literally so crazy that like we didn't have time to get anything. Such a good burger and it was the biggest burger I've ever eaten in my life. I couldn't even fit it. It was so big. That place was really 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 good and it was like a quick walk from our hotel Like you just had to go down like the street and it was like right on the end It was I can't even begin to explain like how gorgeous it is I'm so glad that I got to experience it, but it's so so pretty. I love the most how it's decorated for Christmas Um, I think that's so cool You see that a lot in Portugal and obviously in like cities here and stuff But I just I always get so like happy when I see it decorated for Christmas I don't know why I think it's cute. I like the, the lights and stuff the hotel I think the coolest part about the hotel was the floor in the bathroom area. This was like shower floor all the way through the bathroom where the toilet was, where the shower was, where the ironing board was and everything. And it was such a pretty hotel. And they had like really, really good shampoo, like big sized shampoo. I was like, this is dope. Usually the hotels we stay at, they give you like this big and they're like, figure it out. If you forgot anything, you're you know what I mean? But this one, like it was a really big, really big bottles. It smelled delicious, like Oliveira. It was so good. It was an absolutely wonderful experience. If anyone hasn't been to Boston, I highly recommend it. Actually, one of my mutuals, Mila, said that they loved Boston as well. I've just met so many people who love it. It's so gorgeous there. This, The streets are their city streets. So getting to the airport was confusing as hell, but it was a really, really good experience. I did notice that there was a lot of smog, but I think that's just because that's how cities are. LA is like that too. It was so amazing. I will say the coffee was not good. Good. Starbucks. Oh, there we go. Thought the coffee was gonna be like amazing. I always like trying like foods and coffees in different places, like different Starbucks and things like that. The coffee wasn't good, but I really can't blame them because I've been to a couple of places where the coffee's not good either. But Pete's coffee, the first time I ever tried Pete's coffee was at the airport coming home at, at Boston International and it was delicious. 10 out of 10. Their white chocolate mocha, schmackin'. It was just, it was crazy. Like it was so like spur of the moment. I'm still trying to process it all. So I'm still like forgetting a bunch of it. It was a really, really, really cool trip. The hotel was so, so, so cool. The bed like rolled out and it was, it was like very compact, but not in a way where you felt like squeezed in almost. There was still a lot of room to like do stuff, but it wasn't like overly large. Me, mom and Nessa all slept in like one bed. It was, it was a great hotel. I loved it so much. And Venus is like, mommy, I want to sit in your lap. It had such a beautiful view of the city, which I was so excited about because I love seeing new cities and things like that. But since it was such a spur of the moment decision, I did want to come home. I missed 
being home because I wasn't expecting to go. I still don't regret it at all. It was an absolutely amazing experience and I'm so glad that I got to see Boston. I've never really traveled that much. I've been to like a few places now that I'm older, but growing up, like we didn't really have the funds to do any of that. So even though we weren't going to Boston under the best circumstances, I still think it was a really fun experience. I'm glad that I went, even if it was just for a day, I definitely want to go back and be able to explore it more and stuff like that. They also did have a holiday market, which I thought was cute. It was like a little, I'm not sure exactly what it was because we couldn't go inside, it was all full. I think it was like a fair kind of thing where you could like go in and like do all these holiday things and like get holiday stuff. It was really cute. Also, Boston was absolutely downright freezing. It was so cold. I saw everyone there with like earmuffs and mittens and I was like, I get it because like the way it gets cold in DC in February is how cold it is in Boston in December. It was absolutely freezing. It's not like out of the realm of cold that I'm used to. It was just a lot colder than it is in the DMV right now. Flight home was phenomenal. God, that pilot was amazing. When we touched down, usually when you touch down, if you've never flown before, when you touch down, it's like a not very smooth because you were just flying going literally 500 miles per hour and now you're putting the wheels on a runway and you're trying to stop a plane that's going like 500 miles per hour. You know what I mean? So it's not usually like very smooth. This pilot phenomenal landing. I barely felt it, it was so nice. The poor person sitting next to me on the flight must have been like, are you good? Because I was like freaking out the whole time and they were just trying to take a nap. <laughs> they were like literally just trying to, I was like, I'm so sorry, like I'm bothering you. We also, our flight got delayed because Dulles was too packed with too many flights coming in. I guess a lot of people fly on Sundays. I'm not really, I'm not really a seasoned flyer so I don't really know how like everything at the airport and stuff like that works. We actually had to stay in Boston for 30 extra minutes because there was a, like a full flight to DC. They needed to check bags. They had to start taking people's bags because there wasn't enough room in the carry-on compartments. Then Dulles was so full that they were like holding flights back. So we had to stay back in Boston, like just chilling on the runway. Like we got all the way to the runway right where we were about to take off. And the pilot goes, yeah, we gotta stay here for like 20 minutes. <laughs> so we did land late, which was super unfortunate because a lot of people had connecting flights. Everyone was in a panic. When we landed, they were like, please let everyone who has a connecting flight get off first. And so I just saw people like grabbing their stuff and Booking it because a lot of people had to check their bags It was just more stressful for the people who were getting on connecting flights And I could see like the stress in their eyes and it was stressing me out because I was like Oh my god, you're stressed out and now like I feel bad that you're stressed out I was stressed out for them But so I saw so many people who were on my flight just like running to baggage claim like all and Dulles International is big It's significantly bigger than Reagan or like any like national airport So I just saw people running from one side to the other to like baggage claim and then running back to catch their flight And it was absolutely insane I've never seen so many people running in an airport in my entire life, but they were booking it and then I heard this one person, they were talking to the child and they were like, you're doing good, we just gotta go. And they were like holding their kid's hand and they were running through the airport. Such a good flight though, like there was barely any turbulence. I think we had turbulence like once when we were going down through the clouds because it was cloudy when we landed. I got some beautiful, beautiful shots because the sun was setting when we were flying home. It was, oh, it was just so gorgeous. I think that that's all that we did in Boston. If I forgot anything, I will be sure to add it in. The hotel was amazing. The coffee, I'm a little disappointed, but I mean, not known for coffee. I also got the cutest lobster. Put it on my Instagram story. It's the cutest little lobster that I got from a uh, Boston International Airport. I'm super happy I had a safe flight home. Flying makes me violently nervous, so if anyone is out there flying making them nervous too, just remember it is the safest form of travel brought to you by Angie was actually the one who told me that when I was telling everyone in the group chat that I was getting on a flight. <laughs> she was like, it's the safest form of travel, so just remember that like you're gonna be safe. It's literally the safest way to travel. The, the chances of you getting in a plane crash are either one in five million or one in 20 million. So I do have some really cool stuff planned for 2022 and the end of 2021, so keep an eye out. I do want to get back into posting and everything again. I'm just still trying to gauge it all out. I don't want to burn myself out, overwork myself to the point of where I can't create content that I'm proud of because it will piss me off. My neighbor is coming home and they're watching me film this. I think that that is it. If you do miss me because I haven't been posting as much, you can check out my Instagram, you can check out my TikTok, you can check out my Twitter, or you can check out my Twitch stream. I'm there literally all the time because I am obsessed with Genshin and I play it all day long. There will be two versions of this vlog. This is the one where I'm talking and then there will be a cinematic version. Those take significantly longer to edit, so that's why that that one will be up later. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. I love you so much. Remember to stay safe, do your homework, and drink water, and I will see you in the next one. Say bye, Beanie. Bye! What the beanish? The beanish? The beanish? Oh, the bean. Oh, the bean, bean, bean. Oh, the bean, 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 bean. Oh, the beanie. Oh, the beanie. Oh, the beanie, bean, bean, bean. I love you, mamas.